Can I ask you something? Sure you can. Where were you standing? I never saw you. You mean when you took your amazing leap? Yes. Standing on the platform, minding my own business. Here you come, holding hands. A professor of philosophy has decided to throw himself in front of a train called the Sunset Limited. You have one person who's uh, very educated, a professor, and you have another guy who's been in prison. What is it you believe in? Cultural things, for instance, books, music, art. What's the use of having notions such as them if they won't keep you glued down to the platform when the Sunset Limited's come through at 80 mile an hour? Good question. You've got these two dynamos performing, Tommy Lee Jones and Samuel L. Jackson in a Cormac McCarthy play. Now open the door! Don't do this! The language, the poetry of it is very important. There's no going back, there's no setting things right, there's only the hope of nothingness. In Cormac's case, it's a lot of fun. What you got against being happy? It's contrary to the human condition. Contrary to your condition, I gotta agree with that. They're working from the text of Cormac's play. It's very elegant, precise, beautiful language. Everything you do closes a door somewhere ahead of you. Finally, there's only one door left. That's a dark world, Professor. He listens and talks a little bit about each scene. He simply collaborates with us. See, that's the question. But it's, but it's more, but it's not a question, it's an accusation. When you have three people as talented as Cormac and Tommy Lee and Sam, the best thing to do is get out of the way. You're not making any sense. Oh! Oh, there was some hard work from the professor. The preacher has fell back. He's clutching his heart. His eyes is rolled back in his head. We're trying to be very literal, I think, to Cormac McCarthy's words and his stage directions. I didn't do anything to him. What is it? Did the shot die now? It's fascinating to work with an uh, actor who's also the director. They're both jobs that make me happy. Oh, we can do that. He's very specific and he's a great planner. The set's meant to depict a single room. We did not want the room to be big. But we wanted to have a very athletic camera. We wanted to be able to put it anywhere. We didn't want the cramped space to take away a camera position. Tommy was adamant that the, that the camera never leaves the room, and it doesn't. They're in this space for the entire movie, so in finding the right camera placement, the right blocking, that was the thing that Tommy and I had talked a lot about. We were concerned with the reality of what the room would be, the choices we had to make, which were, should this be housing projects, should this be more tenement, and the size of the room was really important. I wanted to give him enough circulation space, but I didn't want it to seem claustrophobic. It was important to Tommy that Samuel feel involved in the set. So a lot of the choices, like a photograph of Martin Luther King in a vegetable baggie, which was based on research in an apartment in Harlem. You know where I learned to fix this? In Louisiana? Mm -mm. Right here in the ghettos of New York City. It's a lot of different influences in a dish like this. The story takes place over an hour and a half, and it starts just before dawn, so it's night, and it's raining. And as it progresses, the light slowly comes up. The backing outside the window, when you light it from behind, it's a night backing, and when you light it from the front, it's a day backing. So at certain points, when they look out the window, you see the, the lights coming up uh, in the sky, and then gradually, um, it gets brighter and brighter, and the light changes color temperature. We get cooler light coming in from the windows. It doesn't rain anymore. As we developed it, we thought a little depth in the bathroom. It gave an opportunity to change the quality of light back there. And I feel like it really does add a lot, and I think the rain services that also, to just add a layer between a backing and just a, an atmosphere and a mood. I don't understand why you live here. As opposed to where? Anywhere. <laughs> this pretty much is anywhere. It is just me and him, and he chose me to do this. Okay. My biggest concern now, outside of the words, is not disappointing him. What you think is wrong with you that you finally narrowed all your choices down to the Sunset Limited? I don't think there's anything wrong with me. I think I've just been driven to finally face the truth.